In 1903, Madame Curie won the Nobel Prize for her pioneering work on radioactivity, which she mistakenly considered harmless to humans. We now know that her premature death from a rare blood disease was directly related to her exposure to radiation. Lead was a common ingredient in house paint and other household items until scientists fully understood the deadly effects of lead poisoning. Until the 1980s, the federal government was reluctant to stand up to the powerful tobacco industry, even though millions had died of smoking-related diseases. Let's face it, sometimes we're slow to recognize danger when it's not painfully obvious. And the government is reluctant to take action even after the danger is exposed. Unfortunately, many people suffer and die before we eventually get around to dealing with many potential risks. And in spite of the fact that we have curtailed smoking, regulated harmful pesticides in agriculture, reduced the kind of chemicals we use in food and household products, decreased dangerous toxins that pollute our air, many diseases are on the rise, including Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and some forms of cancer. Why? Well, many scientists believe we're under assault by another form of common pollution we may have underestimated, invisible, odorless, silent, and potentially deadly. This form of pollution is everywhere. You can't escape it. Electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs, produced by most electrical devices, appliances, and the high voltage power lines that surround us. Electromagnetic radiation, emitted by most wireless devices, and microwaves, the same energy frequencies we use to cook food in microwave ovens. But your microwave oven isn't the only source of pulsing microwave radiation that assaults you every second of every day. Television, telephone, and computer signals are transmitted by microwaves. Even some automatic garage door openers use microwaves to operate. Some environmentalists call this proliferation of EMFs electropollution, and one United States government agency warns that the levels Americans are exposed to every day without even being aware of it may be dangerous. The fact is, you, your loved ones, your children are exposed to 100 million times more EMFs, electromagnetic radiation, and microwaves than your grandparents. And now, one source of electropollution has become an increasingly integral part of our lives. Up close and personal, the cell phone. In 1993, the first lawsuit was filed against the cell phone industry by a man who claimed his wife's brain tumor was caused by cell phone use, a brain tumor shaped exactly like her cell phone antenna. The resulting publicity prompted the cell phone industry to fund a $25 million study to prove that cell phones were safe. They hired Dr. George Carlo, a highly respected public health scientist, to conduct the research. Dr. Carlo's study was thorough and conclusive, proving just the opposite of what the cell phone companies wanted. In fact, Carlo found a strong connection between cell phone use and brain tumors, neurological disease, and genetic damage. The scientific evidence is mounting daily. Last year, the European Union, using 15 different laboratories, confirmed all of the findings of Dr. Carlo's group. And this may just be the beginning. Like smoking and lead poisoning, the damage from electropollution is cumulative and may take years, even decades, to reveal itself. But every exposure may adversely affect your health. Public health scientists now estimate there are 30 to 50,000 new cases each year of brain and eye cancer directly attributable to cell phone use. Children and teenagers are at greatest risk from electropollution damage because their skulls are thinner, they have more brain fluid, and their bodies are not fully developed. How much time does your child spend on the cell phone every day? And how will the constant barrage of electromagnetic radiation from cell phone use affect your child's health in five years, 10 years, 20 or more years. And if you think using a hands-free set reduces your risk of exposure to deadly radiation, think again.
According to research commissioned by Britain's Consumer Association, conventional hands-free sets may actually increase electric field strengths inside a user's head by three and a half times. It appears that the headset wire acts as a concentrating aerial that attracts and channels radiation toward the head, not just from your cell phone, but from all sources of EMFs, electromagnetic radiation, and microwaves in the vicinity. In a recent study, neurosurgeons at Lund University in Sweden proved conclusively a link between radiation emitted from cell phones and brain damage. Dr. Sheldon Levy, a respected physician and surgeon, has studied the effects of EMF radiation. I have to tell you, it's hard to ignore the data. We must consider the long-term risks of cell phone use. If indeed the effects are cumulative, then young people who are using cell phones at such an early stage in their development run a particularly high risk. But cell phones aren't the only culprit. Scientists have become increasingly concerned about the potential risks involved in exposure to low-level microwave radiation from microwave ovens. Keep in mind, like all forms of radiation, you may not see or feel the microwaves that escape your microwave oven. But don't underestimate the power of this insidious form of electropollution. And there is no escaping this invisible menace. Electropollution is not limited to cell phones and microwave ovens. Home computers, laptops, cordless phones, televisions, refrigerators, hair dryers, coffee makers, even our cars add to the daily accumulation of electropollution that may be pushing us closer to a national health crisis.